it's not every day that you watch a film that sort of touches your heart uh, makes you want to pick up the phone and call your friends uh, makes you want to tell everybody you have to watch this sweet little film that somebody's made and then when the question is who is this somebody who's made this film and you take the name of kiran rao who's sitting here next to me kiran welcome to india today thank uh, you tushar i have to say that if it wasn't lapata ladies i would have said lapata kiran for a while <laughs> because we missed you at the cinemas and i think uh, this is sort of a compensation in a very long time overdue to get you back in theaters just tell me in all of these years that you know you were reading things you were watching movies you were traveling you were living your life what What has been your guiding compass for films since Dobi Ghat? Has it changed? Has it evolved? And how has it evolved? Oh, that's a really interesting question. Yeah, because being Lapata wasn't part of the plan. I was, you know, like every uh, filmmaker wanted a film out at least every couple of years, and I was working towards all these dream projects that I still have sitting in the, uh, you know, now they're cooking at various stages of development. But um, it just never, nothing came together in quite the right way. but i think the guiding compass now that you make me think about it is really uh, you know making films is a lot of effort it takes a lot of it takes a more than a village honestly to make a film and uh, you really want to be making something at the end of the day that you feel satisfied with and you feel was worth it in a way that uh, when you're speaking to so many people you're doing something of value to for more than just yourself you know it's a story that you're interested in sure you have to be interested in it it has to work for you but do you think there's something that can have some sort of um, you know lasting impression on people uh, i think every filmmaker hopes for that and uh, i think that was my compass because though i had stories that i loved and i was very keen to tell i didn't think that they were at the place where they could i could share them with a big audience so um that was really the compass and when this sort of came my way i was like boom you know yeah. it was so um instinctively the right second film for me tell me as somebody who is very hungry for uh, in- enriching stories for characters right that you get completely engrossed in like we did with these two girls and then everybody on the periphery then there is an industry that you're a part of that works on trends right everybody wants to jump on a bandwagon there's a romantic film that does well everybody is getting in that south films do well oh bollywood is shutting down south is doing well every 3 months there's a trend we talk about it we ask you that question as an observer and as a bystander to all these trends come and go how have you managed to sort of keep your foundation so strong and not fall into these traps i suppose uh, it's really what you want to do if you're in it for the business of it in a sense i suppose you're looking very much to what an audience wants to see or what is deemed successful um and uh, luckily for me i've been associated with amit khan productions that has never used that as a, a sort of the that as the guiding metric that you know oh this is the kind of film the formula that sells um i think one thing that doesn't change is that audiences genuinely enjoy stories that challenge them interest them surprise them make them laugh or um uh, touch them deeply you know and uh, while we are kind of like looking at it zoomed out and saying oh you know action thrillers work or whatever romantic comedies mm. are working right now etc i think audiences don't really think like that there are a uh, fan bases for each kind of genre perhaps but uh, a good story i think uh, trumps everything you know people will come out if they feel like you know this is there's something here that i want to see um and i think that's what both amir as a producer believes in and i certainly believe in as a director and producer how often does kiran watch movies like how often do you watch popular mainstream films that come to screens on a friday and if there's a film that has sort of made you feel like oh i wish i got this script you know i got to be on that narration table when this came to me is there a title that you really enjoy um uh, i think the last big uh, you know kind of popular film that i really enjoyed was gully boy mm. uh and i really felt like oh i wish i had got a story like that that's a really great story um i mean it's a world that i would have loved to uh make and i think zoya did an amazing job um i don't go out to the cinema for every friday for a film honestly uh, i i watch a lot of stuff streaming but i do go to the cinemas for instance for the last time i went was for past lives uh, i like international cinema i do like indian films and uh, i've because of the post production of this film i've missed a whole bunch of films that i plan to watch 
um, starting from Pathan and ending now at uh, 12th fail, which I am really keen to see also. Um, but I, I genuinely love the cinema experience and so actually more recently I went to uh, the cinema to see Anatomy of a Fall. So I feel like the cinema gives you, I don't know, it's a, it makes every film better honestly than it would in your home where you'd be tempted to turn it off. You'd still in a cinema, you know, sort of watch it to the end even if you, it's not entirely your cup of tea. And that's I think because it was designed to be a collective experience, you know, and uh, um, I'm really happy that people are coming back to cinemas. I can feel like people are looking to, you know, have that experience more and more. And uh, with, with the success of 12th Fail, you can see that it's not like people are only turning out to see big stars or big action. I want you to watch 12th Fail because perhaps after that we could have a longer conversation. I drew a lot of parallels between that and Lapata Ladies for the simple reason that at the core of it, it's the story of human emotion. It's the story of underdogs. It's the story of you just wanting to sort of push through and make it through till the end, right? Yeah. Like in this, with the case of these two girls, uh, such diverse lives that they lead. And then I don't want to give away spoilers, but it's a roller coaster ride that you sort of jump on throughout the film. Talk to me a bit about finding these girls because that must have been so important, right? To get that the correct. That really was. I mean, it, at the end of the day, you know, you have to take that leap into this kind of satire that it could happen that two girls could get swapped on a train and um, you have to buy this world, really. And. Um, for that, apart from physically that the two girls needed to be the same height and mm. structure roughly because otherwise how would you, you know, sort of mistake them for each other, for the other. Uh, it was important that they be great actors and in some way uh, embody this one is Pool who is really innocent and the other is Pushpa who is kind of shady. Um, and uh, we did really wide casting. Uh, we wanted to look for faces that sort of embody the character but also people uh, that would fit very seamlessly into like 2001 India, rural India, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's tricky because uh, uh, it's also, a, you know, in India we have so many different kinds of amazing talent and uh, we just literally wanted these girls even without your knowing anything about the film, these two faces that would really embody these roles and uh, actually Nitanshi came to the role who plays Pool yeah. very early. I mean, I saw her test quite early on. We were casting during uh, just after the second wave. So around the second wave. So, uh, you know, all of this was sent to me on tape. Uh, and for the longest time, I hadn't met any of them. And Nitanshi was just super natural because she's also is a young girl, innocent, but also curious, right. and, you know. Uh, so she was you know, very quickly we locked on her and uh, then the search was on for Pushpa and honestly it took me a while to find Pratibha mm -hmm. because once uh, there's a there's a quality that you need, a chameleon like quality you need for Pushpa yes. and uh, it really, it was, it was some something a little intangible that we were looking for because uh, you don't know whether to trust her but you can't, she's not a villain, you don't want to hate her. So, it's uh, it's it was it was w great. Once we found her and we did readings, it was it was lovely. But uh, she was the harder one to cast, and it was mm. it was uh, and the language was a little bit yes. harder for her because she's not from central. She's from Himachal, but uh, interestingly, her story actually mirrors that of Pushparani quite a lot. And I don't want to give anything away, but once you see the film, it's interesting to know that she uh, that girls you know have very similar stories including the lead who's playing the role you know wow. so yeah it was a it was a really fun uh, casting process honestly you know also what's interesting is that the title could be such a metaphor if you look at the larger context just the word lapata mm -hmm. that feeling of not knowing where you are being lost in a crowd being in a room but still feeling alone yeah. a feeling that all of us feel just a human emotion we push that to the back so many times in our daily conversations mental health right now is taking the forefront in such an important topic and I'm so glad that people are coming out and speaking. You know, in an industry which is not only just so competitive, sometimes it could get toxic and it could sort of push you to boundaries where you feel that there's no hope. Then you find a story like this which sort of is the other end of the prism and spectrum. Mm -hmm. Just for anybody who's watching this perhaps is in the industry, is battling with something like that uh, on a daily basis to find work. Uh, to find of go to that producer, you know, knock that do door and find it open, have 65 auditions and then still do the 66th audition. Mm -hmm. 
what would you say to them because you see all this so up close and personal right mm. i do and actually it honestly it breaks my heart because there's so many people really really talented very uh, interesting faces and great uh, you know range of kinds of performance that are out there but uh, there it's often the case that we rely on the same one group of people uh, to cast and um, it is very it can be very disheartening for an actor because uh, it's really not genuinely not it's getting that first break and then pushing through with that and fitting the role being in the right place at the right time knowing the right people and i would just say honestly um find things that uh, that you can do other than honestly this is mm. a weird thing to say but uh, find other ways to hone your craft other than waiting for a role i mean obviously all of them are constantly doing auditions i i realize that that's the only way you can keep your career going and that's great because my film is a case in uh, as as an example where right. we've cast almost everybody you wouldn't have seen before you know you wouldn't apart from chaya kadam ravi kishan geeta agarwal you know there are few pe people you'd know but another lapata ladies will come along so but while you're waiting for that do a bunch of other things that keep you immersed in your craft keep you excited about performance and i greatly recommend theater stand up poetry you know doing uh, doing stuff with your own circle of friends you know whether it's uh, uh making a shot on an iphone you know it it gets very tiring to keep trying to fit other people's and tick someone else's box yeah. so find uh, a spot which makes you happy whether you're ticking someone else's box or not you know yeah that's that's a good one to take home actually that's a good one to keep uh, you know amir made a very interesting con commentary the other day he said i'm looking for age appropriate roles and i'm really i'm not wanting to rush into anything i'm okay to take my own time which is such a cool thing to say right because in an industry that absolutely is dominated by khan say what may come uh, box office trade numbers bloodline of the industry right. then for him to having said that you know topics like these like pay disparity uh, just the age gap between an actor and an actress mm -hmm. things like these uh, industry perhaps shies away from speaking mm -hmm. um you are an active producer you have your own production house now and you are i'm guessing excited to talk about all those scripts which you have with you <laughs> which which perhaps in the next few months years we will get to see yeah. how are you going to tread and navigate all of this like like i asked you at the start right what has been your guiding compass what is your is your compass in these areas like you want to make sure that then you're not succumbing to the pressures and the peer pressures and the society pressures of conforming to these norms because that's what you're trying to break even with a film like this i guess when you're a huge star it's really hard to sort of give up the that part of your like that spotlight that you're in and um, and you know also producers or the market is sort so dependent mm. on the stardom so uh, it's really like you said it's great that amir thinks like this it's not easy for anybody who's kind of uh, taken it for granted that look i'm only going to be you know at the center of all of this um to give that up so i mean you know i i mean obviously i have no advice for stars they'll find a way to uh, you know transition into whatever phase in their lives and honestly there's roles my my only take on it is that we don't actually it's it will be very exciting now we have you know this older generation of actors as well mm -hmm. including say anil kapoor or uh, jackie shroff or you know a whole bunch of actors from different age groups who are doing very exciting work and yeah. there's it as writers as filmmakers we're looking for uh interesting you know uh, older characters as well if you mm -hmm. see my film i mean chaya kadam is a lot younger than yes. what she's playing my ideal would have been a woman whom i could have cast at that age uh we just could not find we we searched a lot and there was a couple of actors who might uh, actually not so much actors a dancer and people that i was trying to cast but we all we are always looking for people at different uh in a different age group so i think uh, for filmmakers it just becomes much more exciting if we have that range of actors in that Mm -hmm. age group and we can cast more age appropriately or we are also casting queer people for queer roles right. or trans people for trans roles rather than try to cast big stars in every kind of role you know so um it just makes it believable it it opens up your casting potential like you your films 
become more diverse. Yeah. We we are able, and I think uh, it, it's happening. Whether we like it or not, the uh, OTT is doing it. The fact that we have um, you know the the South and the and Hindi films and all kinds of films now have mm. it's all the, the, it's sort of broadened and flattened it out has. really. And people are not necessarily only watching a film for a star. They're mm. watching a film for a story really. Mm. Uh, which is what I see, feel like, you know, that is a broad trend that we should take away. It's that mm -hmm. uh, the audience now just wants a good story. Okay. They've, they're watching things from everywhere. They're watching, you know, uh, Korean dramas, Turkish dramas, American films, uh, British, uh, whodunits, you know, they're watching everything. So, uh, I think there's space for a lot of different kinds of people to be working in the industry. And I really, really, I'm excited about you know, doing doing that in my own films, like in having that in my own films. No, you're right. It's a great time to be a filmmaker. You're right. I also like the fact that you said that, you know, Amir doesn't have to be a part of everything I make. Uh, there is this sort of a cloud looming over one's head when that happens. Um, as just two creative people, what kind of conversations do you have? Because day in and day out, you must have scripts sent to the two of you. Uh, then how do you take a call to perhaps, okay, this looks like a film that goes uh, organically with what you want to make. And then this seems like a more larger setup that perhaps we are looking at from the broader perspective. And two is, would you go to a Salman or a Shah Rukh tomorrow if your script demands? Like, would you also want to cast people who are then the superstars and the A-listers as we call them? Because the script demands it, not because... Yeah, sure. I mean, to answer the second part first, of course, I would love to work with, uh, you know, A-listers. And um, honestly, there's a lot of talent there and I'm sure they'd be happy to do something unusual if it uh, makes sort of sense to them. So yeah, I'm fully open to that. Uh, maybe someday I'll have like songs and where people are sort of doing choreographed dance numbers. That's one of those that I have to take off. <laughs> yeah, you must, <laughs> I already have that visual. <laughs> like, you know, cards flying through the air, some major action. I plan to do all of it. Uh, Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me this question like five years hence and I might change my answer. But, um, but yeah, um, what do, uh, but Amir and I, you're right. I mean, you know, we, we do talk work a lot. I mean, that's a big common ground that we share. And the good thing is we depend a lot on each other for sort of advice, creative advice. And uh, I, whatever I do, I kind of run it by him just because I mean, you know, I feel like he has a sort of creative compass that I rely on a lot. Often he doesn't agree with me, but that helps me clarify what, why I want to do it. And uh, often he does agree with me and we are, we are good, but also it just, it's something that we enjoy, you know, sort of as um, two people who've worked together for like one and a half decades. So it's a, it's, a, it's a good space, honestly. I have my own production house now, but I'm always going to be involved with AKP in, uh, in anything that we do because, you know, it, uh, emotionally and sort of, you know, creatively, I'm always excited by what Amir Khan Productions does. So. I will be involved, but uh, I've started a small sort of creative lab called Kindling Pictures. And uh, the idea is really to be incubating my own stories and testing my own ideas that I've been developing for a long time. Uh, hoping that like I can get some stuff made in the next, I don't know, decade. Wow. But I like the fact that I just like the name Kindling, first of all, if we just say that, I think it just sounds, it just sounds really cool on the year. You know, it's so weird because I was thinking of what to call it and I was like, you know, uh, it's all about ideas. It's, yeah. you know, so you, it's kindling, the, the verb is uh, to kindle something, but it also is a noun. It means the, the raw material that starts the fire, the dry leaves, the wood, wow. that's, it's, so it's also a kindling. noun. And I was like, you know what, actually when I started, the idea was to, I wanted something in my name that would have kind in it. So it you was the a weird, yeah, yeah, the kind link, kind of like that part is, anyway, sorry. Genius. Backstory. backstory. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm just curious to know that, you know, we've seen Lapata Ladies and I really wanted to come out and people to watch it because that's the best feeling to have, right? But then in the future going ahead, what can we expect from Kindling? Like, like what are the kind of stories that you will veer towards? What is, if somebody wants to submit something to you, like what's a one liner that perhaps you would pick up and say, yeah, this, this sounds interesting. You know, uh, there's no formula. We're doing a whole, we're developing a whole bunch of things from sort of, uh, um, you know, detective, you know, murder genre to uh, literally like a subversion of the Sas Bahu genre 
um, we are doing a dark sort of uh, not thriller but suspenseful Delhi film. So there's a whole. I mean, I'm we are doing a lot of different kinds of things. But I think the guiding principle is to kind of do um, work that makes us sort of see, experience different kinds of characters, different worlds, also in some way understand the world we are living in perhaps but in a way that's also fun and like draws you in and mm. uh, makes these compelling stories and characters. I'm always, uh, we always, at least for me it's the, it's the characters that sort of lead uh, any story. It's plot is, which is why Lapata was so unusual I couldn't have written yes. it. It's like such a crazy plot hook. Absolutely. That, uh, that but when I write, I kind of start with characters that interest me. So, uh, so there'll be a bunch of different kinds of things I'm also producing for other young people who are making stuff. So, trippy. Let's yeah. go with it. I like yeah. those. I like that. <laughs> you know, you said Delhi, and it gets me to the fact that Delhi Belly yeah. is such an underrated gem. It is. was so ahead of our times. If it comes out, like say now, yeah. becomes a cult classic, right? Like I know so many of my Absolutely. friends who keep rewatching it, yeah. and the fact that we just have Imran back now, yeah. like on the cover, and yeah. just like you know, just with his charm and his yeah. personality. Yeah. Talk to me a bit about that. Just having Imran back, like it's so cool. Right? I'm really, really excited for him because it's also a great time to be coming yeah. back. There's so many opportunities. It's a whole world of different kinds of work being made and uh, and you know he, he he's unlike anybody else yes. you know he has such a unique personality a unique look so i'm very excited to see what he's going to do and i really wish him all the very best i'm just really really fond of him. yeah we are all very stoked for him ran to come back that's true uh, i have to leave you by asking i mean there was a comment that a friend of mine made when she walked up out of the room and she's like I know the internet is going crazy with animal and all of that, but look at this film. This is a great answer to that for anybody who has an opinion and could be polarized. It's all right. Social media is all for conversation, right? But you watch Lapata ladies. Now that's another take on anything that anybody wants to say. So why not? You have two different refreshing point of views. You pick up the spoon and plate that you want to have and eat, right? Do you feel that conversation is now so perhaps when, when people watch Lapata ladies, this point will come up that this POV and this perspective of women who also face that subversive nature are dominated and then they come out strong in their own way, but not because they have to, but because they feel like they need to, you know, it's such a cool way. You haven't like put shoved it down our throats, like with a gun to our head, like you have to adhere to what they're saying. It just feels so organic, right? I mean, there are two polarizing points of views. I really think there's space for all kinds of films, honestly. And I'm really excited for people to watch this because uh, it's not like what I've said in it, it hasn't been said before. There's lots there that yeah. you know and you've seen. But uh, yeah, hopefully, like you said, it's a refreshing take. And I think there's space for all these conversations and films that engender conversations are honestly, uh, to my mind, really doing their job, you know, because um, yeah, sure, we want escapism, we want entertainment, but I feel like while we have that, can we also, you know, leave someone with some sort of lasting impression or uh, spark an idea somewhere. So I feel like there's space for everyone. And I'm, I'm hoping to have found a little space. I hope to find a little space in the audience's uh, attention. Absolutely. I think I started with Lavata Kiran and I think she's not only found herself, but we found her, we found a new Kiran and we're not letting you go. Uh, we need to be on this hot seat sooner than later and congratulations on the film. It's such a beautiful treat for us. Thank please, you. please keep doing you and please keep giving these movies to us. Mm -hmm.